Hi, I'm Jess and today we're going to have a look at the bare essential knots that you need to know when you're out on whitewater rivers. So the figure of eight is a very important knot that has a lot of different adaptations. To create a normal figure of eight, all you're going to do is you're going to twist the rope 180 degrees and then another 180 degrees and then the end of the rope is going to go through the hole. To do a figure of eight on the bind, all we're going to do is a normal figure of eight. However, we're going to use two bits of rope at the same time on the bight. To do this, we're going to create a loop of the rope. We're going to go around the back of the loop and then back up and through the hole. And that is our double figure of eight on the bight. If you're not able to get that loop of rope in your figure of eight, over an object, then what you can do is do a retraced figure of eight. And that allows you to place a rope around a large object and then retrace it back through the figure of eight. All you're going to do is to start with your normal figure of eight. And then with your end, you're gonna go around the object and then come back to your figure of eight. When you come back to your figure of eight, you're going to follow the piece of rope that you've gone around the object with. So you start by going through the loop and then following the bit of rope and wherever that bit of rope goes, you follow it with your end of your rope. So what you're doing is you're following that other figure of eight or retracing it. So therefore it's called a retraced figure of eight around an object. The water knot or tape knot is used to attach two ends of webbing together. And that's so that we can create a loop in our webbing. First thing we're going to do is just do a thumb or overhand knot. Then we're going to find the place where the webbing goes in and over the back of the thumb knot. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace it with our other end. And by doing that, we're just going to follow the bit of webbing. So wherever that bit of webbing goes, you're going to trace it or follow it with your other end. Starting from the very end of your webbing, you keep tracing it around and wherever that bit of webbing goes, you keep following it with your other end. The great thing about this knot is the more pressure that you place on this, the tighter it's going to go. You wanna make sure you have at least a full hand's worth of tail on each end so that it doesn't pull through. So the Alpine Butterfly is used to attach a loop and a rope. And so we can attach items to that rope. What we're going to do is we're going to twist the rope once. Then we're going to place our finger on top of the X. Then we're going to twist it again. This part of the rope, the top of the rope, is going to go underneath the rope and then back through where your finger is. Once it's pulled through, we just dress it. And there's our Alpine Butterfly. Alpine Butterfly is used to create a loop in the rope. And so we can attach gear on that loop. All right, now we're gonna move on to the double fisherman's knot. The double fisherman's knot is a way of attaching two pieces of rope together and a great way of creating a prussic loop. First, allow the working end to go over the rope. Then go over it again and make an X. Place your finger underneath the X. And then with the working end of the rope, Come back underneath the rope and pass that through the back of the X. Pull it tight and then you've got half of the double fisherman's. To finish off the second half of the double fisherman's, just turn it over and do the exact same knot on the other side. Pass the working end over the rope, make an X. Once you've done that with the working end of the rope, place your finger underneath the X and you just pass the working end through the back of the X. Pull tight.
and then pull the rope together to create a prussic knot. The next knot we're going to do is a prussic knot. And this allows us to attach a prussic loop to our rope and create an anchor on our rope. What we're going to do is we're going to place the knot about in the middle of our prussic loop. And once we've done that, we place it over the piece of rope. We bring it under, and then we go over again. And bring it under, and then pull on that bit of rope. Allow the knot to come through. And we don't want the knot of the prussic to be in our prussic knot. And then we just dress the knot, and then when we pull on that rope, it's gonna bite and not move. If you wanna create more tension, you can just go around and do another loop on that bit of prussic. The more loops that you place on your prussic knot, the more friction is going to be applied to that piece of rope. So that's it, there you have it. Don't forget, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So remember to practice these knots. Remember also to do some sort of qualified rescue qualification before you get out in the water. Thanks for checking in, we'll see you out there.